Um, good evening, everyone. I'm Steve O'Keefe. Um, Doug gave me a very flattering intro there. I'm not quite sure what to make of that. All the Kelly Clarkson soundtrack. Um, I've been involved with the Kokoda Challenge since its inception in 2005. I was a competitor in the very first year. I did five challenges, and since then I've been, um, as Jan said, the the um, the official photographer on the course. We've got a team of guys that, that cover the event every year. Um, but I'm here in my capacity as a former competitor to talk to you tonight. Um, Doug Henderson asked me in 2010 when I sort of retired from competing uh, to come along and share my experiences, not because I'm a great athlete, but because I'm right up there among possibly the worst competitors he'd ever seen across the first five years of the event. Um, if there was a wrong way to do things, uh, I've, I've probably done it. Um, in 2005, we set off full of um, bravado and, so, and, and you know hoopla, and, and it was amazing the experience that we had as the like like the gravity of the event started to dawn on us. And and I honestly think we were in some sort of mild shock. And I'm not exaggerating here. We had a guy down with dehydration. We were all cramping. We were taping blisters. And then we got to checkpoint two. <laughs> and it's very kind of you to laugh at that, but it's unfortunately it's not actually a joke. It's it's, it's um it's true. But so I've got I've got a few things to to share with you tonight. Um, you're going to hear from Scotty, who's who will talk about nutrition and um, and. Uh, First aid and that sort of stuff. You're going to hear from Jeff, who's the who's the event coordinator. He'll talk about the logistics and the administration of the event. What I want to share with you is ten things not to do on your first Kokoda challenge. If it's your first time, then I see there's plenty of you out there. And if you, if it's all starting to get a bit real, starting to get a bit nervous. Yeah, yeah. You've got nodding, furious nodding down the front here. So I can I can share ten things, sort of. Well, not not to do, but, but things that will help you avoid the stupid mistakes that I made um, from 2005 through to 2009. So, my tips to getting through and not losing your friends or your toenails. Um, the ten things I've sort of split up, five you can do between now and the event, the other five are on race day. Okay. So, these, these things, five things you can do before the event. Can we have a... Oh. I've got a clicker here. Okay, number one, know the track. Um, for those who've been down on the track, you'll know what I'm talking about. For those who haven't been on the track yet, any part of the track, ignorance isn't bliss. <laughs> I'm a Gold Coast born and bred boy, and I was floored by the amount of horrendous terrain there is on the Gold Coast, hidden in the hinterland, that the, the course sort of traverses. So, if you've been out every, every Saturday morning running on the beach, that's great. I urge you to get down there. You've got five weekends between now and race day. Get down there, and even if you go to one hill, go to a hill, a little hill called Polly's, from the base of Polly's Kitchen. Go up and over into Numabar Valley and come back. It's a, it's, it's a, it's, a, it's not a huge part of the track, but it's really, um, sort of representative of the terrain you'll be on, on the day. Ignorance is not bliss, I promise. Okay, experiment. Um, now I'm not talking about sort of like getting, sort of like downloading Tinder or sort of doing anything <laughs> a bit freaky. What I mean is everything that you're planning on doing on the day, experiment with beforehand. So that goes for your fitness, it goes for your nutrition, it goes for your equipment. In 2005, me and my mates rocked up at the start line, and quite honestly, our reaction was, <laughs> look at all these blokes wearing tights. <laughs> um, because we had no idea what uh, compression garments were. And of course, we were the ones at two o'clock in the morning calling the ambulance. Um, and that's not a joke either. So, um, I, can, I can list off a raft of, of stuff ups that I made with with equipment, with nutrition, and every time it was because I tried something new on, on race day and it just doesn't work. You've got, to race, you've got to plan your race and race your plan. You've actually got Wild Earth here who are the equipment sponsors of the Kokoda Challenge. Um, they're sitting right there with things like poles and 
torches, uh, headlights and, and shoes, all the things, all the key things that I didn't have in 2005, that in 2006 I raced out and bought. Mind you, I didn't try it before the day, I just sort of like rocked up on the day. So in experimenting with your gear, with everything, every facet of your of your event is critical. You've got five weekends to do it between now and then. The guys are sitting right here, the major sponsor. So yeah, sure, you can buy a head torch on eBay for you know 48 cents shipped. Um, but you know these guys aren't supporting the event that you're that you're participating in. The Wild Earth guys are. So. Um, they're a wealth of knowledge, they've got five, te five teams, four teams, five, five teams participating on the day. Go and talk to the guys tonight and get your gear sorted out. Communicate. This is another big one. This guy here in the back, this is Zach. He was a school competitor and he is completely blind and he did the 96K challenge in 2010. And his team led him the whole way from start to finish. Um, this is one of my favourite photos from my sort of uh, photography side of things, and it just demonstrates what can you, what you can achieve when you communicate with your team and you share a common goal. So, if you if you've been out, you know, punching out the four minute Ks for for twenty Ks every you know three times a week, and your teammate has been you know punching out Game of Thrones marathons. Um, <laughs> Probably a good time now to have a chat about what sort of you know finish time you want to aim for, those sorts of things. When you're climbing up Fairview Mountain, it's not the time to start having the discussions about whether we're going to go sub 24 or not. Alright? Communicate with your team and your support crew. Uh, where am I clicking? <laughs> Clickers, can we have a slide? Oh. Learn some history. There are so many good uh, events in South East Queensland and beyond, um, so many great trail events. This is one event that truly has a heart and soul that steeps in our national identity and our, char and our national character. And if I can just give you a little bit of advice, if you don't know that much about the Kokoda um, campaign, do yourself a favour, get onto Google, download a book on your, on your iPad or whatever, Learn some of the history. We've got two events for the school events, the Jim Stillman Cup and the, um, and the Stan Bissett Cup. Those were real Australian diggers, real guys associated with the campaign. Um, and they're so inextricably tied to the, to the spirit of this event that it will really give you some strength when you're out there, as Doug said in his video, doing it tough, to be able to draw on, on, on the importance of what that campaign means to this country. And finally, get to the start line. Now, as I'm a firm believer in that getting to the finish line means getting to the start line first. So what that, what that means sort of in due course is don't do anything stupid between now and the 16th of July. Um, so this is me um, parking at Polly's Kitchen. <coughs> Seriously. 2009, two weeks before race day, we were, get, we were like, yeah, let's go out and do a one last training run. I've been parking there for five years and never realised there was like a big culvert sort of over across the road, directly across the road from the kitchen. They've done all roadworks there now and it's a little bit different. If I had a roll the other way, I quite possibly wouldn't have got to the start line yet. Um, that's a fairly extreme example, but what that means is if you haven't been doing training, don't go out and do a 50k run this weekend. Look after your body, look after your health, eat well, don't do anything stupid and get yourself to the start line. Alright, during the event, five more things you can do during the event. Okay, pace yourselves. Uh, this is John, I think. Is John here tonight? He's a, he's a regular. John Cashman, no? Um, if you can get to the finish line and do some plank, uh, that's good pacing. It means you've got just enough in the tank. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a show off. Yeah. Um, lots of people say, and, and you don't need to admit to this, but if your team has been saying, yeah, we'll just run the downhill bits. Anyone? Yeah, there's a few people sort of nodding. 
Um, if you're a runner, that's fine. Get out there and run, give it a crack. And Scotty will talk about you know, the, the things involved in, in, in really giving Dakota Challenge a good crack. If you were a runner in the early 90s in high school, <laughs> I urge you to pace yourself. Pace yourself is a personal thing. It will, you will determine what is fast and what is slow. But what I can tell you is that as you go powering down those hills, you are smashing every ligament and joint and tendon and muscle from your, from your lower back down to your feet. And it might be all fun and games in the first 10 k's, but you've still got 86 k's to do. So if you're not sure what I recommend you do, go for a hard 15 k run on the weekend. Hard run, like effort. And then stop, cool down, and think, would I want to go for another 81 k's? Right. That's if you're not sure. The runners who, who know that they can do it will know. If you're not sure, please face yourself. All right, except that 96 k's will hurt. This is Andrea. Is Andrea here tonight? Andrea and Michael, long, multiple competitors. Um, we live in a really cotton wool sort of rap society, and, and I, and I think most people do, start to freak out when their toenails start falling off, and they've got chafing that would, yeah, never mind. Um, <laughs> except that it will hurt. Kokoda challenge, it's not Kokoda easy. Just think, I'm really getting my money's worth <laughs> when it all starts going down the And the thing is, is, is your physical pain will start translating to mental pain. Your, your brain will start urging you to stop and, and pull out and do all these sorts of things. Just remember, when you are hurting physically and mentally and you want to pull out and you're at the 40, 50, 60K mark, just remember this really, really important fact. Pulling out won't make the hurting go away. When you wake up on the Sunday morning in your bed and you, you got to sit Duncan Park and you binned it, that will hurt more than that last 30k. And I can attest to that because I've been one of those guys who woke up the next day in my, warm in my bed and unable to move. Beware your demons. This is my favourite one. These guys are walking through Beachmont at it's about 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh, I should say this guy, because the guy on the left is a figment of this guy's imagination. <laughs> <coughs> As I said, your, your physical pain will start giving way to mental pain. And that's when all the ugly things in your life will come and visit you. Now for everyone that's different. Some people it'll be, you know, just lingering doubt. Other people will have a voice in their head saying, you won't do this. You're not good enough. You weren't good enough to win best and fairest in under 13s and you're not good enough. <laughs> and other people might have, you know, sort of this bolt of lightning where it's like the only way out of this mess is to beat my team leader to death with his own poles. <laughs> Everyone will have a different experience in their own way. Their demons will come and visit you. It's normally between sort of two and five o'clock in the morning. Yeah? When it gets to that point, all I can say is just keep walking. All right? It's the same as your feet hurting, your feet are streaming, stop, stop, stop. This is your mind playing games. I could be in bed right now, I could be at Macca's, I could be in the shower, curled up in the fetal position. Just ignore your demons. Forget logic. One of the greatest things in my job as, a, as, the, as the event photographer is seeing every year the just ridiculous um, outcomes of this event and, and the way it just 96Ks turns logic upside down. I've seen the triathletes and the CrossFit champions fail. I've seen the like, pre, uh, former Olympians fail and I've seen grandmas and grandpas and school teachers and school kids jump for joy and do cartwheels at the finish line. All right, there is no logic to this event. Over 24 or 36 hours, over 96 k's, logic doesn't apply. So if you're sitting out there nervous going, I'm really not sure whether I can do this, forget logic, forget about the fact that you may not be able to do it, and just do it. 
Finally, cross the finish line and do something extraordinary. I said in the first bit, you've got to get to the start line. When you're out there, you've got to get to the finish line. And when you're hurting, when you're sore, when you're tired, when your support crew is, you know, drawing up the divorce papers, <coughs> you need to re remain focused on why you're doing this and why you're doing this is to get to that finish line. And for everyone, the finish line will represent something unique. Um, for me, in my later years, it represented the hot shower and the cold beer. Not necessarily in the water. Um, for some of you, it may be that you are just really, really terrified of failing on Facebook and having to say, I didn't make it. In 2005, there was no Facebook, so I didn't have, you know, 400 friends saying, how did you go? Um, now it's a very public thing. You've probably been blasting your friends every weekend. Oh, yeah, I did 30 days, I did this and did that. And look at my new shoes. Your adoring public is watching, so failure sucks on social media. Um, you may do it for the historical significance. You, you, you may choose to, to do it for the, for the diggers, for the memory of the campaign uh, where Australian troops, for the one and only time in history, in fact, defended at the time Australian um, an Australian territory and, and really, um, quite honestly, changed the course of the Pacific campaign in the Second World War. So you may draw on that. That may be what gets you to the finish line. And if, if neither of those do, can I suggest you think about the organisation that you're supporting by doing this campaign. If nothing else gets you going and gets you fired up to get to that finish line, think about... Think about the Kokoda Youth Foundation, the work that they do in our community. We are bombarded by charities and not-for-profits and all these people doing great stuff across the world, but this is a homegrown, local organisation who does amazing things with these young people. I've had the, the absolute honour of seeing these guys grow up as I've grown up over the last 11 years. In 2005, I was in my early 20s and I didn't have a clue what I was doing. 2016, I'm in my sort of mid-ish 30s. I still don't have a clue what I'm doing, but I've got my own kids now. And what I really truly hope is that in another 11 years, that they are part of this organisation. And the only way that will happen is the support of people like you getting out there and being involved and getting to the finish line and contributing to what is what I believe is such a great cause. That's my 10 things. I really hope you do well on the weekend. Um, just unofficially, before I finish up, I'm, I am over time. I've taken Doug's mantle of going over time. Unofficially, on the weekend, thank a volunteer. The staff who run the Kokoda Challenge, Jan, Jeff, Ray Lee, Doug, uh, Rach, Adam, no one forgotten. They're all amazing people and they are so dedicated. But on the weekend, there is an army of volunteers that truly make the thing tick on the day. So if you have a good time, if it's a life-changing experience, go up and say thank you to anyone. Anyone wearing one of the red shirts, scanning IDs, handing out dog tags, say thanks, and the, uh, and the dream will live on, and we'll see you back in 2017. Thank you very much for listening.